is my favorite thing that I've come across. Currently, the biggest weakness of AI video is the constant jittering. By generating hand-drawn styles, we're able to take that weakness and flip it into an advantage. Because naturally, the core component of frame-by-frame -frame traditional media animations is that jitter and low frame rate look. So it's a good pair. Plus, you have endless opportunities for experimenting with different styles. In this video, you'll see I style transferred paper cut, comic book, airbrush surrealism, and more. So let's dive in. I'm going to show you this method step by step. To start, you're going to need stable diffusion. If you need help setting this up, go ahead and watch this tutorial. It's going to walk you through installing stable diffusion for free. I explain how to use it and I talk about using control nets to fully customize your output image. I prefer this method over the pay to use AI generators that you see everywhere. A, this way is free and B, you have way more customization doing things this way. So first we need to prepare our footage. I'm using After Effects for this, but any video editor should work. I'm going to first mask out the subject using the Roto Brush tool. Just double click so that you're in a layer. Select the Roto Brush tool and then draw around what you want to mask out. Move forward a few frames and After Effects should lock onto the subject. Then click the freeze button. After Effects will mask out your footage for you. Once that's already and done, go back into the composition here and we're going to add in the fine edges effect and click invert. The reason we're doing this is because we only want the lines to be processed by our AI style transfer. I'll show you an alternate green screen method later, but for now this should work fine. Let's go ahead and export this out and bring it back into stable diffusion. To do that, go ahead and click file, export, add to render queue. Click here and set the format to PNG sequence, and then click here and set where you want to save it. It's going to render out every frame as an image, so make sure you make a new folder to house all of those frames. Now we can fire up Stable Diffusion. Go ahead and open up the Stable Diffusion local install that I showed you how to set up in that install tutorial that I mentioned. Then go ahead and click on the user.batch file to fire up the web UI. While that's firing up, we can go and search for some custom trained models. Again, the websites that I use for this are Hugging Face and Civet AI. I'll go ahead and link the ones that I used in the description. And again, we're only looking for ones that are tagged with either hand-drawn or brush. If the file is a .ckpt or a safe tensor, then it should work. Download the ones you like. To add them into Stable Diffusion, go back to the Stable Diffusion master file, go and find the models folder, click on Stable Diffusion, and then paste in the downloaded model files here. Once you've done that in the web UI, go ahead and click this refresh button and you should see them pop up. I'll usually do a test in text to image first to make sure it works. Be sure to check the model download page in case there's some trigger words or other info on using the model. All right, so now we can switch over to the image to image tab to transfer the style onto our custom video. We just need to load in a test frame from that PNG sequence that we rendered from After Effects. Then I'll go in and I'll write my prompt, which is hand-drawn line animation and click generate. As you see, we're far off from what we want. So scroll down and lower the denoising slider so that the output is closer to the original input. You also want to match the aspect ratio. For that, I'll change the resolution from 512 by 512 to 812 by 512 so that it's widescreen. And that looks a lot better. From here, you can mess with the denoising and CFG scale sliders to get the look that you want. You can also alter the prompt to change the generation however you want. For example, I can write in stylized curl line patterns to get a more stylized result. Optionally, to match the input image even better, you can add in a control net like HED or Canny. And again, if that sounds like a different language, in that original tutorial that I've been referencing, I show how to install control net to stable diffusion and what all the control nets do if you are interested. Once you have a look that you like, we'll click on the batch tab to apply this style to every frame in our PNG sequence. So in the batch section, you need the path of your input frames. So find the folder where your original PNG sequence is and copy and paste that path. Then for the output, we're going to make a new folder and we're going to copy and paste the path of that here. Then we can click generate and stable diffusion will process your entire video. So check it out, pretty cool results. Once it's all finished rendering, we're gonna pop back in After Effects and mix this with our footage to improve the look. So in the project bin in After Effects, right click, import multiple files, go ahead and find the Stable Diffusion output folder that you made, select the first frame and click import as footage. Drag that into our composition. First, we need to right click and scale it to the frame size so that it matches the size of our original footage. Now you'll see for some reason the composition still doesn't match up. 
To fix that, we need to find the image sequence, right click, interpret footage, main. After Effects automatically imports image sequences at 30 frames per second, but our original footage is 25 frames per second. So I'll set the frame rate to 25 frames per second here, and now you'll see it'll line up perfectly. Let's go ahead and change the blending mode of the lines layer to lighten or add to get rid of that black background. Then we can add in a curves effect and crank up the brightness so that we can see the lines better. If you want, you can cut the layers with Control shift d to get this real-life two-line animation transition. You can also add a glow effect to the lines layer, and you can tweak that by messing around with the glow radius and the threshold. Now a secret bonus tip I found when messing around with this, you can change the blend mode to Stencil Luma to get this cool blend of lines and color. Then on the original footage underneath, we can add in a Gaussian blur effect so that the lines pop more, but you still get those colors underneath from the original footage. This reminds me of that ASAP Rocky JD music video, which I thought was pretty cool. So experiment, you can definitely find some cool ways to mix and match this. So that is the full workflow. The rest of this video is going to be different ways you can apply this workflow to create some cool, unique variations. I'm gonna speed up a lot of the footage and mainly explain what I'm doing differently, because I've already shown you the core steps of what to do. First, I'm gonna show you an example of style transferring a video asset. So in this case, I'm going to render out a 3D asset and I'll make that by using my new Director 3D plugin, which you can check out on my website. Bunch of cool 3D stuff for music video creators. If you don't wanna use a 3D render, you can use a green screen clip or even your own custom hand-drawn animation. Again, you just need something that can serve as a structure for the AI to dream over. So with the 3D render of the skull, again, the exact same workflow, you wanna add fine edges. And this time I used this pop art surreal airbrush model, which I thought was pretty cool. Again, just tweaked with the settings. I used the same setup that I showed you earlier in the step-by-step. -step. And when I ran the batch file and brought that back into After Effects, I got this pretty cool looking skull. So again, run this through different assets to create unique things. This next method I'm gonna show you, I like to call video bashing. This is what I used to make that first example that you guys saw at the beginning, where it's essentially line animations on a bunch of different stuff. So I'm gonna go into After Effects and I'm just gonna drag in some green screen clips or even just images of different things that I want Stable Diffusion to, to generate animations for. So I can drag in this image of a skull and just add a few keyframes so that it's generally over the area where my subject's face is. And then again, I'll drag in some green screen clips just to spice it up. Once you've video bashed up your composition with different assets, let's go ahead and apply find edges onto everything and then export out that PNG sequence. And again, we'll run it through the exact same workflow, still using that surreal airbrush model, tweak the prompt, tweak around with the sliders, and you can get something super cool like this. Now I wanna mention an alternate method here. If you don't wanna generate just lines in your output, then what you can do is instead of adding the fine edges effect in the preparation stage, you can instead just right click and add in a color mat and change that color to green. So you're essentially making a green screen PNG sequence. I did that when I was experimenting with this paper cutout model that I got from Hugging Face. I thought this was super cool. Some of these results were just insane. And again, it's the exact same workflow for setting up Stable Diffusion, rendering that back out and bringing it into After Effects. The only difference is instead of changing the blending mode, you just use a key light effect to remove that green screen background. You can also generate backgrounds using this method, and I thought this was super cool, especially because it plays in with that whole mixed media style. So for the paper cutout composition, I went into text to image and I just generated some cool paper cutout backgrounds and I decided on using this galaxy background. I dragged this into my composition at the very bottom so that everything else was in front. And just to add a more unique touch, I ended up masking out the paper outlines themselves and then adding a little wiggle expression just so each parts of the background would sort of shift and move like you see in those traditional paper cutout claymation animations. So yeah, that's what I love about this. There's so much room to go in and change things, use your After Effects knowledge, your 3D knowledge, create something unique, create something that's different by using AI as a tool. And that's that's the biggest thing that I want you to take away from this video, using AI as a tool. If you're just running something through a style transfer generator, you're not doing any work, you don't have any idea to build upon, then usually your results aren't going to be that good. Try and build on a specific style or a specific idea so that you can use AI as a tool in your arsenal, not as a replacement for your entire video creating workflow. And lastly, talking about backgrounds, I do want to mention the cowboy uh, comic book style render. I thought that was pretty cool as well. I used this model here. 
I used the fine edges method instead of the green screen method. The only difference was I didn't lower the denoising strength as much. I cranked it up a bit so that the AI could sort of dream this cowboy character over where the lines were. So again, you can experiment in stable diffusion to get different results. Once I brought this back in After Effects, the setup was pretty much the same as all the other examples I've showed you. Again, I generated some cool old west backgrounds. So yeah, have fun with it, guys. Maybe you're making a music video. You just want some crazy stuff. Or maybe you're diving in and doing like a full comic animation, a full paper animation, whatever it is. There's tons of room to explore with this. So yeah, take my concepts, build on them. If you guys enjoyed, slap a like on the video, subscribe to learn more, and comment down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.